In this video, I'm going to show you how to merge off of multiple columns. So we're going to go ahead and get our data. I'm going to say um, pop and set that to data.frame. We're going to pull data from base R again, um, so we need to put it into data.frame. And then we're going to do population. And if we run this, you can see that in this pop, it basically has country, year, and the population that's there. So we're going to do another one, and this is going to be uh, tuberculosis data. So we're going to do data.frame, and we're going to do WHO. So this is from the WHO, and we're going to run this. So if we look in TB, we basically get the country, the year, and then um, the new cases and things like that. I don't know exactly how all of this works, but um, the important thing here is that we have um, things to merge on. So essentially what's going to happen when we try to merge this is right now we have, if we just try to merge on country, we have a lot of um, like Afghanistan or all the countries, we have a row for every year. So we don't only want to merge on country, we also want to merge on year. And the same thing within population. Obviously the population changes as the years change. So we want to be able to merge on both. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up, we're going to do a DF merge. We're going to set it up using our first, um, using the first data frame of pop. We can use our pipe operator and then we are going to use our um, command merge and our second data frame TV. Now we want to be able to merge on two different columns. So we can't just do by equals country like we would have done in the previous video if you're in the course. So what we need to do instead is pass in a list to buy. So what we're going to do is do a C um, with parentheses. This is going to give it a list and then we can pass in all of our um, column names that we want it to combine on. So we're going to do on country is one and then the other one is year. So we can see that this has country and year here and population has country and year. If these aren't the same, you can go ahead and run a rename function to uh, make them the same because it's just a lot easier to combine on. So we're going to do this. And if we run this, this is only going to give us the matching countries, um, the, co the country and years that appear in both lists. So if we run this, you can see we get DF merge that has less observations than either of the other two. And this is simply because there are certain ones in this, in the TV list that doesn't appear in population. And it looks like there's about 23 of the ones in population that doesn't appear, appear in the TV list. So now if we open up our DF merge, we can see we have country, year, population, and then all of that information from the other, um, from the TB data. Now you may be wondering if we did an inner merge, why is there all this NA data here? Because in theory, if we do an inner merge and the data doesn't exist in one data frame, then it um, won't actually merge together. You'd have to do a left, right, or outer to get that data. And the reason why is because these columns actually still existed within this TV data frame. These NAs are actual data within this data frame. They're not being introduced by a lack of a match. And so all these NAs are just coming in as the um, as it is merging. Now, one thing you could do is we're going to do a DF. Um, we're going to do a DF merge two. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, TB and before we run our merge, actually, I'm going to do this within the file. So we're going to do DF merge two. And then we're going to take TB because we know that the NAs are coming from TB. We're going to go ahead and drop NA before it gets merged. And then we're going to rerun that merge function of TB and by is equal to the same C of country and of year. So if we run this,
try to rerun it there we go so it was just because I wrote in here earlier but if we rerun this and we open this up so you, now you can see that there were zero observations so let's look at this so there was no observations but it did pull that information over so let's look at TB and the reason why there might be no observations is because we did drop in a on every single um, column. So there may be a situation where there actually is no rows that don't have at least one NA in them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it specifically on this new SPM014. Uh, so we're gonna do it on this new SPM014, yep. So now we're specifying the column and we're gonna rerun it, and now we get 3,173 observations. So now if we open it, we should not see any NAs within this one column here, um, because we at least made sure that we dropped the NAs in that column first. So if you, if you don't want a ton of NAs, but obviously the way this data was set up, there is still NAs in this, um, and it looks like there were actually no rows that included no NAs at all. So, you can see that our number of observations obviously dropped by almost 900 rows that had an NA in this column, and so it's being remerged correctly um, on the country and the year here. So that is how you can do multiple different columns. You just need to give it a list. You can do as many columns as you really want, um, and you really want to do that so that you're being specific in how this data is getting combined together.